Dear learners, so far we studied that the entity classes of any system have logical link with one another. This logical relationship is the theme of this unit. Introduction This unit describes the basic architecture of entity relationship model. It also focuses on modeling of various types of entity classes and the development of complete entity relationship model history of various data models and the current trends on which database design is based. It also focuses on the basic database design derived from entity relationship model. Objectives The objectives of the unit are to understand Architecture of entity relationship model Various types of relationships How the complexities of relationship are handled the effect of cardinality in relationships How multi-valued attributes are modeled How time-dependent attributes are modeled How associative entity types are modeled Hierarchical data model, network data model, relational data model, why relational data model is in use and the basics of database design The ER model An entity relationship model also called ER model, is a detailed logical representation of the data. It is expressed in terms of entity classes in the business environment, the relationship or associations among those entity classes along with their attributes. An ER model is normally expressed as an entity relationship diagram, commonly referred as ER diagram, which is a graphical representation of an ER model. ER model notations let us now discuss the symbols which are used to develop the ER model. These are Rectangle. The entity class is represented by a rectangle. The name of entity class is written inside, as shown. For example, the entity class student is represented, as shown. Oval. The attributes are represented as an oval shaped symbol. The name of attribute is written inside, as shown. For example, the attribute name is represented as shown. Dear learners, let us discuss the representation of different types of attribute. These are multi-valued attribute. The multi-valued attribute is represented by double oval shaped symbol. The name of attribute is written inside as shown. For example, the multi-valued attribute courses are represented as shown. Derived attribute. The derived attribute is represented by dashed oval shaped symbol. The name of attribute is written inside, as shown. For example, the derived attribute age is represented as shown. Primary key attribute. The primary key attribute is represented as an oval shaped symbol. The name of attribute is underlined and written inside, as shown. For example, the attribute registration number is represented as shown. Composite key attribute. Each attribute of composite key is represented by an oval shaped symbol with underlying the attribute name written inside as shown. For example, the attributes roll number and shift are shown as composite key. The ER model. An entity relationship model also called ER model is a detailed logical representation of the data. It is expressed in terms of entity classes in the business environment, the relationship or associations among those entity classes along with their attributes. An ER model is normally expressed as an entity relationship diagram, commonly referred as ER diagram, which is a graphical representation of an ER model. ER model notations. Let us now discuss the symbols which are used to develop the ER model. These are Rectangle. The entity class is represented by a rectangle. The name of entity class is written inside, as shown. For example, the entity class student is represented, as shown. Oval. The attributes are represented as an oval shaped symbol. The name of attribute is written inside, as shown. For example, the attribute name is represented, as shown. Dear learners, let us discuss the representation of different types of attribute. These are multi-valued attribute. 
The multi-valued attribute is represented by double oval shaped symbol. The name of attribute is written inside as shown. For example, the multi-valued attribute courses are represented as shown. Derived attribute. The derived attribute is represented by dashed oval shaped symbol. The name of attribute is written inside as shown. For example, the derived attribute age is represented as shown. Primary key attribute. The primary key attribute is represented as an oval shaped symbol. The name of attribute is underlined and written inside as shown. For example, the attribute registration number is represented as shown. Composite key attribute. Each attribute of composite key is represented by an oval shaped symbol with underlying the attribute name written inside as shown. For example, the attributes roll number and shift are shown as composite key. Dear learners, after types of attribute representation, the next symbol of ER model is straight lines. Recall, we learned previously that attributes are the defined properties of an entity class. This means that attributes are always associated with an entity class. The straight lines are used to connect attributes to an entity class as shown as for example, the entity class student has three attributes, registration number, name and address. These are connected by straight lines as shown. Diamond. Recall once again, we learned previously that entity classes are logically connected or related with one another. This relationship is very important in the database design and implementation. It is the glue that holds together various entity classes of an ER model. The relationship in ER model is represented as diamond shaped symbol. The name of relationship is written inside as shown. For example, the relationship named register is represented as shown. Now it is time to show a simple example of ER model. Consider the statement. A student is allowed to register a project in the final semester. The business rule is only one student can register a given project. There are two entity classes. These are student. Let the attributes are registration number, which is the primary key and name. Project. Let the attributes are code, which is the primary key and title. This situation can be represented in ER model as shown. The relationship register acts as glue through straight lines to connect entity class student with attributes registration number and name another entity class project with attributes code and title. Dear learners, the type of association changes in ER model if the business rules are changed. This is discussed here. Let us change the business rule for the problem stated just before that many students are allowed to register a given project in the final semester. This situation is represented in ER model as shown. The type of association is changed to one to many. Now let us change the business rule once again as many students are allowed to register many projects in the final semester. This situation is represented in ER model as shown. This time the type of association is changed to many to many. Types of relationship. Dear learners, the relationship discussed previously takes many forms which are discussed here. Unary relationship. It is relationship between instances of same entity class. It means that only one entity class is associated with a given relationship. The unary relationship is also called recursive relationship. The general representation in ER model is shown as, for example, one employee that is manager manages another employee that is staff or worker. The manager and staff or worker both belong to employee entity class. There is a relationship named manage. The ER model is shown as it shows that one instance of entity class employee that is manager manages another instance of the same entity class that is staff. Binary relationship. It is relationship between instances of one entity class with instances of another entity class. It means that two entity classes are involved 
in a given binary relationship. It is represented in ER model as shown as, for example, a customer places an order. There are two entity classes, customer and order. There is a named relationship, place. The ER model is shown as, the relationship place connects logically the entity class customer with entity class order. Ternary relationship. It is relationship between instances of three entity classes with one another. It means that three entity classes are involved in a given ternary relationship. It is represented in ER model as shown. For example, many students registered many courses and many faculty members teach many courses. The ER model is shown as, in this model, the relationship takes connect logically three entity classes, student, course, and faculty member. Dear learners, the number of entity classes for a given relationship is not restricted to three, but rather any number of entity classes can be used. Degree of relationship. The degree of a relationship is the total number of entity classes that participate in that relationship. Dear learners, look at these examples. Example number one. The relationship manage has only one entity class, that is employee. Therefore, the degree of relationship manage is one. Example number two. The relationship place has two entity classes that are customer and order. Therefore, the degree of relationship place is two. Example number three. The relationship takes has three entity classes that are student, faculty and course. Therefore, the degree of relationship takes is three. Dear learners, the degree of a relationship is not restricted to three, but the degree of a relationship beyond ternary is considered being a poor practice as it increases complexity. Therefore, the higher degree relationship are advised to decompose in order to make it simple. Let us now discuss how the higher degree relationship create complexity by taking this example as shown. Look at the ER model. The degree of relationship takes is 4 as there are 4 entity classes involved. These are number 1 student, number 2 faculty, number 3 project, number 4 course. The complexity can be easily judged by reading the model as Many students registered many courses. Many students registered for many projects. Many faculty members are assigned many courses. Many faculty members supervise many projects. The single relationship is sometimes difficult to name. Moreover, the relationship takes shows a direct relationship between entity classes, project and courses, which does not exist actually. The relationship takes may be decomposed as shown. Look at the modified version of degree 4 relationship takes. The relationship register connects entity class student with entity class course as many students register many courses. The relationship takes connects three entity classes, student, project and faculty as many students register many projects and projects are taken by many faculty members. The relationship assignment connects entity class course with entity class faculty as many courses are assigned to many faculty members. Cardinality. Cardinality is the number of instances of one entity class that could associate it with each instance of another entity class. Let us now discuss cardinality in more detail by discussing various types of cardinality. These are mandatory cardinality and optional cardinality. The mandatory cardinality is further divided into mandatory one and mandatory many. Similarly, the optional cardinality is also further divided into optional one and optional many. Let us now discuss each one in detail. Mandatory cardinality. If minimum instances of an entity class are one for a defined relationship, it is said to be a mandatory cardinality. For example, a student must register minimum of one course in a semester. The cardinality of entity class course is said to be mandatory. Mandatory 1 cardinality. The mandatory cardinality is said to be mandatory 1. 
if both minimum and maximum instances are one in a relationship. The general form of mandatory cardinality is shown as, for example, consider a statement that a student must take a project in the final semester and moreover, a given project is taken by only one student. Look at the ER model as shown. The cardinality of entity class student is mandatory 1 as the minimum and maximum value of a student is 1 in the relationship takes. Similarly, the cardinality of entity class project is mandatory 1 as the minimum and maximum value of a project is 1 in the relationship takes. Mandatory many cardinality. The mandatory cardinality is said to be mandatory many if minimum instance is 1 and maximum instances are more than 1 in a relationship. The general form of mandatory cardinality is shown as, for example, consider a statement that a faculty member must take minimum of one course but may take more than one courses. Moreover, a given course is taken by only one faculty member. Look at the ER model as shown. The cardinality of entity class course is mandatory many as the minimum course value is 1 and maximum course value is many in the relationship teach. Dear learners, the many in mandatory many cardinality may be a defined number that is 3. It is represented as shown where n is any positive integer greater than 1. Dear learners, let us now discuss optional cardinality in detail. The cardinality is said to be optional if minimum number of instances of an entity class is zero in a defined relationship. For example, a faculty member may not take any course in a semester. Thus, the cardinality of entity class faculty member is optional. Let us now discuss its types. Optional 1. The optional cardinality is said to be optional 1 if minimum instances are 0 and maximum instances are 1 of an entity class in a relationship. The general form of optional 1 cardinality is shown as, for example, consider a statement that a faculty member may not take any course in a semester or may take maximum of one course. Look at the ER model as shown. The cardinality of entity class course is optional 1 as the minimum course value is 0 and maximum course value is 1 in the relationship take. Optional many. The optional cardinality is said to be optional many if minimum instances are 0 and maximum instances are many of an entity class in a relationship. The general form of optional many cardinality is shown as, for example, consider a statement that a faculty member may not take any course in a semester or may take many courses. Look at the ER model as shown. The cardinality of entity class course is optional many as the minimum course value is zero and maximum course value is many in the relationship take. Modeling multi-valued attributes. Dear learners, let us consider instances of a multi-valued attribute phone before its modeling as shown as the analysis shows these drawbacks. Number one, the attribute registration number is supposed to be a primary key, but due to existence of multi-valued attribute phone, it could not be defined. Number two, there is redundancy due to existence of multi-valued attribute phone, that is name, Daniel, is placed three times because having three phone numbers. Thus, adding value of phone number creates redundancy, which is considered one of the major drawbacks. These problems can be resolved by adopting this general procedure. The multi-valued attribute is converted into new entity class. The newly created entity class have the composite key with primary key attribute of original entity class. Establish relationship between original entity class and newly created entity class. Dear learners, there are two possibilities for existence of multi-valued attributes. Each one is dealt in a different way. These are single multi-valued attribute. If there is only one multi-valued attribute in an entity class, then it is converted into separate new entity class. The class name and attributes are required to be defined. For example, consider the entity class student with two single valued attributes, registration number and name, and one multi-valued attribute phone as shown. The multi-valued attribute phone number 
is converted into new entity class phone as shown. The newly created entity class phone has two attributes registration number and phone number. Both attributes collectively form composite key. The relationship have is established between original entity class student and newly created entity class phone. Dear learners, this modeling of multi-valued attribute introduces new types of entity classes. These are Associative Entity Class The entity class with composite key or have existence dependency is called Associative Entity. The Associative Entity Class is also called Weak Entity Class. It is represented by a rectangle with lines. Regular Entity Class The entity class with the primary key or on which Associative Entity Class is dependent is called Regular Entity Class, as shown. Dear learners, let us now discuss how many multi-valued attributes are dealt. There are two possibilities for existence of many multi-valued attributes in an entity class. Let us now discuss each in detail. Logically related multi-valued attributes. Many multi-valued attributes that are logically related with one another form a group called repeating group. These procedural steps are adopted to model a repeating group. Number one. The repeating group is converted into new entity class. Number two, the multi-valued attributes of original entity class become the attribute of newly created entity class. Number three, the newly created entity class must have the composite key with primary key attribute of original entity class. Number four, establish relationship between original entity class and newly created entity class. Let us examine entity class faculty as shown. It has two single-valued attributes, faculty code and name, and two multi-valued attributes, project code and registration number. This model shows a faculty member supervises a number of software projects taken by students. Let us now examine how entity class faculty is modeled. The steps involved are the two multi-valued attributes, project code and registration number are logically related, thus form a repeating group. This repeating group is converted into new entity class project. Number two, the multi-valued attributes of original entity class that are project code and registration number become attributes of newly created entity class project. Number three, the newly created entity class that is project have composite key composed of attributes project code and faculty code. The attribute faculty code is the primary key attribute of original entity class that is faculty. Number four, the relationship takes is established between original entity class that is faculty and newly created entity class project. Not logically related. Dear learners, let us now discuss the second possibility for existence of many multi-valued attributes in an entity class. Here is the detail. If there are many multi-valued attributes in an entity class not logically related, then these procedural steps are adopted to model. Number one, convert each multi-valued attribute into a new entity class. Number two, the newly created entity classes must have composite key with primary key attribute of original entity class. Number three, establish relationship between newly created entity classes and the original entity class. Let us examine entity class student as shown. It has two single-valued attributes, registration number and name and two multi-valued attributes course and hobby. This model shows a student may register many courses and also have many hobbies. It is important to note that the course registration has no bearing on hobbies. Let us now examine how entity class student is modeled. The steps involved are number one, the multi-valued attribute course is converted into new entity class course. Similarly, Multi-valued attribute hobby is converted into new entity class hobby. Number two, the newly created entity class course has composite key composed of attributes, course code and registration number. Similarly, the newly created entity class hobby has composite key composed of attributes, course code and hobby code. The attribute registration number in both the entity classes is the primary key of original entity class that is student. Number three, the relationship have is established between original entity class that is student and two newly created entity classes that are course and hobby. 
Modeling time-dependent data. Updating of data with the passage of time is frequently required in information systems. Sometimes, previous versions of data values are required for future reference. Such type of data whose values are updated with the passage of time and the history of change values is kept is called time-dependent data. For example, the fee per credit hour in a semester for BS program is Rs. 1200, effective from spring 2002 semester. The total fee is calculated by multiplying number of credit hours registered with Rs. 1200. Let the fee per credit hour is raised by Rs. 500 with effect from autumn 2002 semester. The fee of a student in a subsequent semester is calculated at the rate of per credit hour effective at the time of admission. In this case, the fee rate is revised with the passage of time and the history of changes is required to keep. This data item is time-dependent. The time-dependent data always makes a repeating group. The entity class fee is shown as it has two single-valued attributes fee code and description and two multi-valued attributes rate and effective date. Let us now examine how entity class fee is modeled. The steps involved are Number 1. The two multi-valued attributes rate and effective date are logically related, thus form a repeating group. This repeating group is converted into new entity class history. Number 2. The multi-valued attributes of original entity class that are rate and effective date become attributes of newly created entity class that is history. Number 3. The newly created entity class that is history has composite key composed of attributes fee code and effective date. The attribute fee code is the primary key attribute of original entity class that is fee. Number 4. The relationship has is established between original entity class that is fee and newly created entity class history. Gerund. The relationship of type many to many between entity classes when converted into an entity class is called gerund. It is also called associative entity. The reason of converting such a relationship into an entity class is discussed in the subsequent example. Here is the example. Many students register many courses in a given semester. The formation of gerund is given stepwise as Step 1. The single entity class student is shown as it has two single-valued attributes, registration number and name, and two multi-valued attributes, course code and title. There is high degree of redundancy due to existence of multi-valued attributes, course code and title. These multi-valued attributes need a refinement, as in step number 2. The multi-valued attributes are converted into associative entity course with attributes, registration number, course code and title, as shown. Let us examine this refined modeling. The redundancy pointed out in step 1 is reduced as the name of student is stored once, even registered in many courses. But the entity course has still a redundancy, that is the title C++ is duplicated. Dear learners, it is a point to think why there is redundancy. The reason for this redundancy is the existence of relationship register of type many to many between entity classes, student and course. Now it is time to learn how such problems are solved. Here is the detail. Whenever there is a relationship of type many to many, it is converted into new entity class called associative entity, also called gerund, such that there must be a composite key which must be constructed by the primary keys of all associated entity classes. It may also have non-key attributes. The general representation of associative entity is shown as Dear learners, the model as shown is refined further in order to control redundancy as shown. The relationship register is converted into associative entity with attributes, registration number and course code, which collectively forms a composite key. Now let us evaluate the model for any redundancy as existed before. The name of any student is stored once, no matter how many courses does he register. Similarly, the course title is stored once, no matter how many students register that course. Thus, the gerund or associative entity greatly controls redundancy. Dear learners, 
The gerund may also have known key attributes as shown. Super and subtypes. Dear learners, let us first discuss the concept of super and subtype. In most business applications, the entity classes are subdivided into subclasses. This subdivision is generally done for easy administration and management. For example, a university is considered as an entity class university. This entity class as a whole is very complex and difficult to administer. Therefore, it is further subdivided into subclasses that are academic, administration, finance, examination and many more. The generic entity class which is further subdivided into subclasses is called supertype and each subclass of a superclass is called subtype. The ER representation of super and subtype is shown as. Let us consider this example. There are two types of faculty members as regular and visiting. The attributes of regular faculty member are employee code, employee name, designation and salary per month. The attributes of visiting faculty members are employee code, name, teaching rate per hour and contract period. Dear learners, now it is time to examine how the given situation is modeled. Let us model it on the basis of what we learned previously. There are two choices for depicting the ER model. Number one, Define one entity class faculty member as shown. Number two, define entity class regular for regular faculty and visiting for visiting faculty as shown. Let us examine both the models. The single entity class faculty member has a drawback that there are some attributes which are not applicable to every faculty member. For example, the attribute designation is not applicable to an instance or faculty member of the type visiting as shown. The two entity classes that are regular and visiting has a drawback that common attributes that are employee code and name are defined with each entity class. Thus, the commonly existed attributes are defined redundantly. Dear learners, now what must be done to resolve the stated problem with each model? The concept of super and subtype discussed is the key to refine the stated models. The super and subtypes are modeled as Define supertype with attributes common to all defined subtypes. Define subtypes with attributes unique to each subtype. Now let us use the concept of super and subtype in the stated model. Define supertype faculty member and subtypes regular and visiting. The attributes of supertype faculty member are employee code as primary key and name. The attributes of subtype regular are designation and salary. Similarly, the attributes of subtype visiting are as primary, rate per hour and contract period. Dear learners, dealing with super and subtypes, it must be kept in mind that an instance of subtype is always a member of an instance of supertype. The subtype inherits values of all attributes of supertype. So far, we learn that a generic entity is modeled as super and subtypes if all subtypes have unique properties. But what about a generic entity if subtypes have same attributes? Dear learners, such type of a generic entity is modeled as single entity class with an additional attribute for differentiating the type. For example, consider the situation. There are two types of students studying in morning shift or evening shift. The attributes of student are registration number, name and city. The student entity class must not be modeled as super and subtype, but rather be modeled as single entity class as shown. The attribute shift is an additional attribute defined to differentiate the type of student either morning or evening. Specialization and generalization. Dear learners, so far we discuss the basic principles of super and subtypes modeling. But in developing real world data models, how can we recognize the opportunities to explore the super and subtype relationship? There are two processes which serve as mental model in developing super and subtypes relationships. These are generalization, specialization. Let us discuss each one in detail. Generalization. In data modeling, the generalization is the process of defining a more general entity from a set of more specialized entity types. For example, consider these three entity types as shown. The entity car has attributes vehicle identification number, color, price and engine capacity. 
the entity motorcycle has attributes vehicle identification number and price the entity truck has attributes vehicle identification number price and maximum load it becomes clear by closely examining these entities that the attributes vehicle identification number and price are common this fact reiterates that each of the given entity types is a version of more general entity type vehicle as shown the subtype car has attributes color and engine capacity. It inherits all attributes of its supertype vehicle as it is an instance of it. Similarly, the subtype truck has attribute maximum load. It also inherits all attributes of its supertype vehicle as it is an instance of it. Dear learners, the entity type motorcycle is missing here. Is this simply an omission? No, it is deliberately not included because it does not satisfy the condition for a subtype, that is, the motorcycle entity type does not have unique attribute, which is necessarily be present for existence as subtype of a supertype. The absence of motorcycle entity type also shows that an instance of a supertype is not necessarily be a member of any of the defined subtypes. This is discussed further in the next section. Let us now discuss the second process of mental model in developing super and subtypes relationships, that is, specialization. In data modeling, the specialization is a process of defining one or more subtypes of the supertype and forming super and subtype relationship. For example, consider the entity type vehicle. The attributes are vehicle identification number as primary key, price, color, engine, capacity, and maximum load. After further discussion with user of these vehicles, it is discovered that two types of vehicles are used. Each has unique attributes. The domain of stated problem clearly demonstrates that the most general entity type vehicle shall be decomposed into more specialized subtypes, each with unique attributes as shown. Dear learners, now it is clear that generalization and specialization are two techniques used for modeling of super and subtypes. These are summarized as the generalization technique is bottom-up approach while the specialization technique is top-down approach. The application of either of these techniques depends upon nature of problem domain, previous modeling efforts, if any, and maybe personal preferences. Constraints in super and subtypes relationships. Dear learners, so far we discussed the basic principles of super and subtypes modeling and concept of generalization and specialization. But very often, there are constraints which help to apply important business constraints to super and subtype relationships. These are completeness constraint and disjointness constraint. Let us discuss each in detail. The completeness constraint addresses the question whether an instance of a supertype must also be a member of at least one subtype. The completeness constraint has two specialization rules. These are total specialization and partial specialization. Let us discuss each one in more detail. The total specialization rule specifies that each instance of supertype must be a member of some subtypes of the supertype. The general representation is shown as the two parallel lines that join supertype entity to small circle shows that total specialization. For example, consider there are two types of employees that are regular and contract. Each type has some common attributes and unique attributes. The common attributes are employee code as identifier, name and designation. The unique attributes of regular employee are basic salary, annual increment, and allowances total. The unique attributes of contract employee are total salary and contract period. Dear learners, in order to model this example, we first analyze it on the basis of our previous learning as the problem domain shows that super and subtype relationship must be applied to model it and either of specialization or generalization technique could be used. The problem domain also shows that an employee that is an occurrence of supertype is necessarily be either of the two defined subtypes that are regular or contract, but never both at the same time and there is no other type. This shows that total specialization rule is applied. The super and subtype model of the stated problem is shown as Dear learners, let us now discuss the second rule of completeness constraint that is partial specialization. 
The partial specialization rule specifies that an instance of supertype does not belong to any of the defined subtypes. The general representation is shown as the single line that joins the supertype entity to a small circle shows the partial specialization. For example, let us modify the employee example just discussed in total specialization as the organization generally has two types of employees, regular and contract. However, there may be other types also such as early paid. Dear learners, in order to model this time, we first analyze it on the basis of our previous learning as the problem domain shows that super and subtype relationship must be applied to model it and either of specialization or generalization technique could be used. The problem domain shows that an employee that is an occurrence of supertype is not necessarily belong to either of the two defined subtypes that are regular or contract, but may also be of other undefined type. This shows that partial specialization rule is applied. The super and subtype model of the stated problem is shown as Dear learners, after discussing the completeness constraint, now let us discuss the disjointness constraint. The disjointness constraint addresses the question whether an instance of supertype simultaneously is a member of two or more subtypes at the same time. It has two rules. These are disjoint rule and overlap rule. Let us discuss each in more detail. The disjoint rule specifies that an instance of supertype must match to only one of the subtypes, either defined or undefined. It is represented in two ways, as shown. The small circle with D inside shows disjoint rule. The parallel lines show that there is no other subtype except the defined subtypes, for example. Let us modify slightly the employee example discussed earlier in total specialization. Here is the modified model as shown. The employee is the super type entity with common attributes employee code as identifier, name and designation. There are two subtypes regular with unique attributes basic salary, annual increment and allowances total and contract with unique attributes total salary and contract period. The model shows that an instance of employee is necessarily matched with either of the two defined subtypes regular or contract. Dear learner, this is second representation. The small circle with D inside shows disjoint rule. The single line shows that there may also be subtypes other than the defined subtypes. For example, let us once again modify the employee example discussed in total specialization. Here is the modified model as shown. The employee is the super type entity with common attributes employee code as identifier, name and designation. There are two subtypes regular with unique attributes basic salary, annual increment and allowances total and contract with unique attributes total salary and contract period. The model shows that an instance of employee is necessarily matched with either of the defined subtypes regular and contract or any other subtype not defined. Dear learners, after discussing the disjoint rule, now it is time to discuss the overlap rule. The overlap rule specifies that an instance of supertype may match to one or more of the subtypes, either defined or undefined. It is also represented in two ways, as shown. The small circle with O inside shows overlap rule. The parallel lines show that there is no other subtype except the defined subtypes, for example, Consider there are three types of sport teams that are cricket, hockey and football in a sport club of a college. Each team has some unique attributes. Every member of the sport club is allowed to be member of more than one team. Here is the ER model. The model shows that an instance of sports club is necessarily matched with one or more of the defined subtypes, hockey, cricket or football. Dear learner, the second representation of overlap rule is shown as the small circle with O inside shows overlap rule. The single line shows that there may be other subtypes other than the defined subtypes. For example, let us modify the sports club example just discussed. There are three types of sport teams that are cricket, hockey and football in a sports club of a college. Each team has some unique attributes. Every member of the sport club is allowed to be a member of more than one team and may be member of a team undefined as subtype, such as tennis. Here is the ER model. 
The model shows that an instance of sports club is necessarily matched with one or more of the defined subtypes hockey, cricket and football and other subtypes undefined such as Hierarchical Data Model The hierarchical data model was the first data model used for database design and implementation. In this data model, the entity classes are organized as a set of nodes in hierarchical manner, like an inverted tree structure as shown. Here are few features of hierarchical data model. The entity classes are represented as a set of nodes. The entity classes are arranged in inverted tree like structure starting from top node called root node. The nodes are linked physically through pointers with one another. The relationship among entity classes is parent-child. Dear learners, although hierarchical data model was very popular in the early era of database, however, the designer faced certain problems such as the nodes insertion and deletion was very difficult, the model was pointer-based, it supported only one parent-many-child relationship, the model was rigid and static in nature, there was high degree of redundancy. But with the passage of time and advancement in the field, these problems were slightly overcome with the introduction of network data model. Network data model. In the network data model, the entity classes are organized as a set of nodes where any node could be connected or linked with any other nodes as shown. The network data model preferred over hierarchical data model because of less redundancy and elimination of one parent many child relationship. However, the designer was still faced with certain problems such as number one, the nodes insertion and deletion was very difficult. Number two, the model was still pointer based. Number three, the model was still rigid and static in nature. These problems were overcome with the introduction of relational data model. Relational data model. Dr. E. F. Codd first introduced the relation data model in 1970 and it is still in use. In this model, the entity classes are represented as a set of relations or tables as shown. The representation of table starts with the name of table followed by column labels separated by comma and closed in parentheses. For example, the table named student having three columns labeled registration number, name and city as shown. The sample instances are shown as relation. Dear learners, let us discuss the term relation, also called table, in more detail. The relation is the basic building block of relation data model. The term relation is defined as it is a named two-dimensional set of data represented as unnamed rows and named columns. Every relation, whether simple or complex, has certain properties. These are Every relation has a unique name. The column names are unique within table. The value of each cell that is intersection of a row and column is atomic. There must be primary key or composite key but never both at the same time. This ensures that every row is unique. The rows may be viewed in any required order. The columns may be viewed in any required order. Converting ER model into relations. Dear learners, let us now learn how entity relationship model is converted into database tables or relations. The entity relationship model is a primary source of designing database tables. If entity relationship model is modeled correctly, the database design will be perfect. Many case tools are available to design tables from ER model. However, it is important to know the conversion mechanism of ER model into set of tables. Let us now discuss it in detail. Dear learners, remember this general rule. In order to convert an ER model into tables, the entity class is converted into a table such that number 1. Name of the table is derived from name of entity class. It is preferred that the table have same name as entity class. Number 2. The attributes of entity class are converted into fields or columns of the table. Number 3. Include keys. Dear learners, after knowing the thumb rule of entity class conversion into table, it is now time to explore it further. Here is the detail. Regular entity conversion. Each regular entity class is converted into a table such that the attributes of entity class are converted into fields or columns of the table. For example, let us see 
how the given entity class customer with attributes customer number, name and city is converted into corresponding customer table. The entity class name that is customer is converted into table name customer. The attributes of entity class customer that are customer number, name and city are converted into corresponding column names that are customer number, name and city. The sample rows are shown as let us now discuss conversion of composite attributes. If regular entity class has a composite attribute, then the atomic components of composite attributes are converted into columns as discussed earlier. For example, consider the entity class student with two atomic attributes, registration number and city, and one composite attribute name along with constituent parts, first name and last name. The entity class name student is converted into table name student. The atomic attributes registration number and city are converted into corresponding columns registration number and city. The atomic parts of the composite attribute name that are first name and last name are converted into corresponding columns first name and last name. Multi-valued attributes conversion. If regular entity class contains a multi-valued attribute then Two tables are created. The first table contains all the attributes of regular entity class except multi-valued attribute. The second table contains attributes with the primary key of first table along with multi-valued attributes of source entity. This table must have composite key. For example, consider the entity class student with two atomic attributes, registration number and name, and one multi-valued attribute, hobby. Two tables are created as shown. Number one, the entity class name student is converted into table name student. The attributes of entity class registration number and name are converted into columns of table student. The column registration number is the primary key. Number two, the multi-valued attribute hobby of entity class student is converted into table named hobby. The primary key attribute and multi-valued attribute of entity class student are converted into columns of table hobby. The column registration number and hobby makes the composite key. Associative entity conversion. If there is an associative entity, then it is converted into a table such that the primary key of regular entity is included as common attribute. The table resultant has a composite key with primary key of regular entity. For example, Consider the entity class employee with two atomic attributes, employee number and name, and the entity class skill with an attribute skill. The entity class employee is converted into employee table with columns employee number as primary key name. The entity class skill is converted into skill table with columns employee number and skill with composite key. These tables are shown as, the sample rows are shown as, Dear learners, after learning conversion of various types of entity classes into tables, now it is time to discuss how these entity classes along with relationships are converted into tables. Let us first discuss entity classes of binary relationship. Every entity class with a binary relationship is converted into a table. The relationship between the tables is built by defining common attribute in both the tables. Let us now discuss various types of associations involved in binary relationship. One-to-one -one association. Consider the statement that a student is allowed to register for only one project and a given project is taken by only one student. The ER model is shown as The given model is to be converted into table as Step 1. Tables formation. The entity class student is converted into student table with attributes registration number as primary key and name as shown. Similarly, entity class project is converted into project table with attributes project code as primary key and title as shown. Step 2. Build relationship. The relationship between table student and project is defined by defining common attribute in both the tables. This can be done by including the primary key of any one table in the other table as non-key attribute called foreign key, as shown. One-to-many association. 
There are two possibilities for binary one to many association. These are number one, if the relationship has an associative entity, then each entity class is converted into a table and common attribute is already defined. Consider the ER model as shown. The entity class employee is converted into employee table with columns employee number as primary key and name. The entity class skill is converted into skill table with column employee number and skill both as composite key. The common attribute employee number in both the tables is already included. The sample rows are shown as Number 2. If the relationship has strong entities, then each entity class is to be converted into a table. The primary key of table, which is formed from entity class having cardinality 1, is to be included to the table, which is formed from entity class having many cardinality as foreign key. Consider the ER model as shown. The relationship place is a binary relationship as its degree is 2. The entity classes are customer with attributes customer number as primary key and name. Order with attributes order number as primary key and amount. Dear learners, let us see how this conversion takes place. The entity class customer is converted into customer table with columns customer number as primary key and name. The entity class order is converted into order table with columns order number as primary key and amount. The relationship between these tables is formed by including the primary key of customer table that is attribute customer number to table order as foreign key. The sample rows are shown as Dear learners, so far we have discussed two types of associations of binary relationship conversion into set of tables. Now we will discuss many to many relationship conversion. Here is the detail. There are two possibilities for existence of a binary many-to-many -many relationship. These are with associative entity, without associative entity. Let us discuss each one in detail. With associative entity. If there is binary relationship with an associative entity, then every entity class including associative entity is converted into a table. The attributes of each entity class becomes columns of corresponding table. Consider the ER model as shown. Let us examine how this model is converted into set of tables. The entity class student is converted into student table with column registration number as primary key and name. The entity class course is converted into course table with columns course code as primary key and title. The associative entity class register is converted into registration table with columns registration number and course code both as composite key. The sample rows are shown as without associative entity. If there is a binary many to many relationship without associative entity then each entity class is converted into a table. Additionally an additional table is also created. The primary key of each table created is included in the additional table as composite key. Consider the ER model as shown. Let us examine how this model is converted into tables. The entity class student is converted into student table. The attributes of entity class student are converted into columns of student table. The column registration number is selected as primary key. The entity class course is converted into course table. The attributes of entity class course are converted into columns of course table. The column course code is selected as primary key. An additional table registration is created. The primary key of student table, that is registration number, and primary key of course table, that is course code, are included as composite key. The sample rows of student table are shown as the sample rows of course table are shown as the sample rows of registration table are shown as the binary many to many relationship may also have non key attributes such as attribute date of registration as shown the table formation process is same as discussed earlier as shown the non key attributes of the relationship are included in the additional table such as date of registration in this case, as shown, 
Unary relationship conversion. The entities with unary relationship are also converted into tables just like the entities with binary relationship. The common attribute that is foreign key is to be added such that it references the primary key value of the same table. Such type of foreign key is called recursive foreign key. Dear learners, let us discuss various possible cases of unary relationship. These are one to one association, one to many association, many to many association. Here is the detail of each case. One to one association. The entity class of unary relationship of the type one to one is converted into a table. The attributes of the entity class are converted into columns of the table. The primary key of the entity class is converted into primary key of the table. This primary key is added as recursive foreign key with a new name. Consider the unary relationship manage of the type one to one with an entity class employee as shown. The entity class employee is converted into employee table. The attributes of the employee employee number and name are converted into columns of the table. The primary key of the entity class employee is converted into primary key of the table employee. This primary key is added as a recursive foreign key with a new name manager. The sample rows of employee table are shown as one to many association. The one to many unary relationship is converted into tables in the same manner as one to one unary relationship as discussed earlier. Many to many association. The entity class of unary relationship of the type many to many is converted into two tables. The attributes of the entity class are converted into columns of one table. The primary key of the entity class is converted into primary key of the table. An additional table is also created. The primary key of the table created from entity class is included in the additional table along with another column which is with the new name of the primary key of the same table. This additional table must have composite key. Consider the unary relationship manage of the type many to many with an entity class employee as shown. The entity class employee is converted into employee table. The attributes of the employee class, employee number and name are converted into columns of the table. The primary key of the entity class employee is converted into primary key of the table employee. An additional table manager is created. The columns include the primary key of employee table and an additional column manager. The columns employee number and manager forms the composite key. This primary key is added as a recursive foreign key with a new name manager. Super and subtype conversion. The super and subtype relationships are converted into tables as number one, convert super type entity into a table. All the attributes of super type become the column of that table. The key of super type will be the key of resultant table. Number two, convert each subtype into separate table. The attributes of all subtypes will become the columns of respective tables. The key of super type table will be included into all tables. Consider the super and subtype ER model as shown. Dear learners, let us examine how this model is converted into tables. Here is the detail. The super type entity faculty member is converted into faculty table with columns employee code as primary key and name. The subtype regular is converted into regular table with columns employee code as primary key, designation and salary. Similarly, the subtype visiting is converted into visiting table with columns employee code as primary key, rate per hour and contract period. The sample rows of faculty table are shown as The sample rows of regular table are shown as The sample rows of visiting table are shown as